Well, good morning. I hope that you had a, uh, a good chapel this morning and um, that you did really well on the quiz. Well, I'll try and get those graded and back to you by Friday. Um, but right now we're going to do lesson 2 for A. So if you get your notebooks out and get ready to take notes. Um, it's just the beginning of 2-4, so it's not it's not too bad yet. Um, we did do this in ham, um, but the ram kids haven't seen this, so it might be a little bit more difficult for you. We will go over it on Friday, of course, when I get back. So we're kind of getting ready for Chapter 3 now. Um, this is the last lesson of Chapter 2. And Chapter 3 is going to be all about derivatives and rates of change. And so we're really interested in how things are changing. That's pretty much what calculus is, uh, the first half of calculus. Um, <clears throat> so we'll have a couple parts today. Uh, we're first going to find the average rate of change. The average rate. And you've done this before, lots and lots of times in your life. Um, the average rate of change is the amount of change over time. Okay? And we know this as the slope of a line. The slope of a line. Okay? And of course, you take a y value minus another y, and you take the x value that belonged to that first y value, and subtract an x value that belonged to the other y value. And so it's always been the change in y over the change in x. Um, all right, so we know how to find the slope of a line. We know how to look at a line and say, you know, if it's in slope-intercept form, oh, the slope's 2, or the slope's negative 3 fourths, or something like that. But we can also find the average change in any kind of a, uh, a function. So for example, let's find find the average rate of change find the average rate of change of f of x equals x cubed minus x over the interval 1 to 3 okay so you can't find, because the x cubed minus x is constantly changing its slope. Um, let's go ahead and graph, and graph that and look at it really quick. So um, here's 1, 2, and 3. And you can graph this on your calculator if you needed to, but um, we don't have to. I have the graph right here for us. So it goes like this goes down here, it goes like that. Here's the graph. Oops. Um, I don't like that right there. Okay. All right, so there's the graph. It's just a cubic function. Looks like this and goes up. Go dips under, comes around like that. Okay, and what we're, we want to do is we want to find the average rate of change um, from 1 to 3. These are x values right here. This is an interval. It's an interval on our graph from 1 to 3 right here. So we're trying to find the change from 1 to 3. We're trying to find the slope of that line. Okay. Um, so it's just an average rate of change. That's why um, that's why we can find the slope of that line because we have two points, two points on that line. So let's find our two points. So one is our first x value, and we're going to take one and to find out what y is, you just plug it in your function. So we're going to do f of one. F of one is one cubed minus one, which is zero. You can see that right there on the on the graph. Um, and then the other point is when x is 3, and you could plug that into your function. f of 3 would be 3 cubed, 27, minus 3 is 24. So there are your two points, and you can find the slope of the line 
by doing m equals 24 minus 0 over 3 minus 1. And so the slope would be 12. So the average rate of change, <coughs> excuse me, the average rate of change um, between 1 and 3 is 12. And this line right here, this yellow line, has a very special um, name to it. They call it the secant line. And that's not secant as in when we do trig stuff, but it's called uh, the secant line. It's the average rate of change. Okay? And we use this in real life with uh, something like, like this. Number two. All right, it says that um, after 23 days, after 23 days, they're doing the study in the lab, and there are 150 uh, fruit flies. Um, nobody's killing these flies, which they should. It's disgusting. But on day 45, they check it out, and now there are uh, 350 flies. I mean, they're out of control. Okay? Now, this could be growing exponentially, or it could be growing um, at a linear rate of change. We don't know. Um, they only give us two points, so if it was two points, we could find, you know, a, a linear uh, growth. But we could also find an exponential growth. But it doesn't matter. We just want to find the average rate of change. The average rate, okay? So, um, the fruit flies depend on how many days there are. So the days would be the x value. So we have 23 days and 150 flies. And then we have 45 days and 350 flies. And so we want to find the, the change, the average rate of change. So we'll find the slope. So take 350 minus 150 over 45 minus 23 and you get that it's changing at 8.6, oh, it's an average, 8.6 uh, flies per day. All right, next page. Now, that shouldn't be new to you, any of that stuff, because it's just slope. You've done that, um, like in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Advanced Math, stuff like that. All right, now here comes the new stuff. Here we go. So if you haven't really been paying attention, you might want to buckle down here. Um, we're going to find something called the tangent, the tangent to a curve, okay? And what the tangent does is it will tell us what the slope is, it tells us what the change is at one point, okay? And we've never done that before. We've always had to have two points. They could have been really close to each other or far apart. But we always have to have two points to find slope because it's, you know, the change in y over the change in x, and you need two points. Well, to find the tangent to a curve, that is to find the slope at exactly one point. So, for example, you know that cubic graph that we had a minute ago that looked something like that? Okay. Um, and if we wanted to find the slope... Let's say we want to find the slope at, um, I don't know, at zero, okay? Well, it'd be hard to do because we don't have another point. Um, we just want to find it at zero. Well, we're going to find what's called the tangent line. The tangent line is going to be the line that goes right next to it. And I like to explain tangent lines this way. Um, let's say that you and your friend, you're walking along, and you're talking about whatever, the, the calc quiz that you just took, and then your friend says, oh, did you see uh, whatever was on TV last night? And then you, people say that, um, you know, you go off on a tangent. And that's what that means. I mean, you're walking along here with your friend, we're talking about the quiz, and then your friend goes off on a tangent, okay? Um, it's just a line that goes right next to touches your graph. Um, it can go through other parts of the graph, that's fine, but um, we want to find the slope at that specific point. So this point right here, I want to find the slope at that one point. Well, how in the world am I going to find the slope at one point? Um, 
here's another one. Maybe you physics people will know this one. See the maximum there? What's the slope of the line at the maximum? What's the average rate, or not average, what's the rate of change at that point? And you should know that that's zero if you've taken physics because um, a velocity, stuff like that, you learn a bunch of stuff. Um, you know, velocity zero at the maximum minimums. All right, so um, let me go ahead and show you how we're going to do this. We have a formula to do this. Um, so let me do a picture. We're going to derive the formula together. So draw an xy plane. And let's go ahead and draw a curve on this. Okay. Doesn't matter what kind of curve, just a curve. And then let's say that we want to find um, the slope of the tangent at, at whatever this is right here. Okay? We want to find the slope of the tangent right there. So this line there. It should just go through that one point right there. Um, I'm going to draw that a little bit better. It's hard on the iPad. Okay, so we want to find the slope of that line. So what we do is we actually take a point somewhere down here. Okay, We're going to call uh, this point x, and we're going to call this point down here x plus h. And this distance from here to here is h. Okay, so we have x, we have x plus h, and what we do is we draw the secant line through those two points right there. Now, as you can see, the red line and the blue line are not the same. They don't have the same slope, and um, they're not the same line. Um, so let's find the points on the red line real quick and the blue line. Um, and that same point that's on the blue line that's also on the red line. So up here we have this point right here. Uh, let me do a different color. This point. And this is the point x plus h comma f of x plus h. Okay? Um, I so this is f of x and that would be x plus h f of x plus h. Yeah. There. Oh, okay. So this right here is also on that red line f of x. So this is the point x comma f of x. All right, so we have two points and we can find the slope of the red line. So let's find the slope of the red line. I'm going to do it in red. <coughs> so this, oh, that's why I'm home today, old guy. All right, so the slope of the red line is this. We're going to take the y value um, of this point up here minus the y value of that point down there. So we'll do f of x plus h minus f of x. So this is y2 minus y1 over x2, which is x plus h, minus x1. Okay, so let's simplify that. I'm going to write it in blue now because this is actually almost getting us to the slope of that blue line, which is what we want. So it's f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now what happens is, as this, I love you too, as this right here, this point, as h shrinks to zero, so let's say this point is moving. Okay, I know that's kind of weird, but it's moving, 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 and as it goes to zero, it becomes x. And what you get is you get this line right here. Okay, so as I move this point closer and closer and closer to x, I get um, that that distance in there that h is going is zero. And that, of course, we can't have h is zero because we'll have, you know, um, an undefined 
an undefined uh, slope. So we have to take the limit. Oh, let me write that in blue. We have to take the limit as h goes to 0 of this right here, and that will give us the slope of the tangent line. There it is. Slope of tangent line. There we go. Okay? So that's the formula. That's what we're going to do every single time to find the slope of the tangent line. So let's do some problems now. Here we go. Number three. All right, so given a function, let's say we have f of x equals x squared. Here's your basic parabola, okay? We want to find the slope, okay? They could say we want to find the rate of change, um, but we'll just say find the slope at the point 3, 9, okay? We're finding the slope at one point. We're finding its rate of change. Um, so let me show you what this is looking like, okay? Let's graph this. So we have your basic parabola. Vertex at the origin goes through 1, 1, goes through 2, 4. Let me do this 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 1, 2, 4. And then 3, 9, which is up here. Okay, so here's our, our graph, our parabola. And um, here's our point at 3, 9, our way up here. And we are trying to find the slope of the tangent to the point 3, 9. It brushes right against it, goes like that, goes down, okay, at one point. All right, so let's do it. We've never done this formula before, so here we go. We are going to find the limit as h goes to 0 for f of x plus h. Now let's talk about what f of x plus h is. f of x plus h is to take x plus h and plug it into our function, which is up here. f of x equals x squared, okay? So we're going to do f of x plus h equals, plug it into our function, x plus h squared. That's the first part, x plus h squared. Minus f of x. Well, what is f of x? It's right there in green. Looks kind of weird. f of x is just the function. It's x squared. And this is all over h. All right, and now this brings us back to what we did at the beginning of this chapter where we, um, I'm going to get this out of the way, where we did uh, solving limits algebraically, okay? Because if we plug in zero, we're just going to get zero over zero, but that doesn't mean the limit doesn't exist. The limit does exist. There is a slope at 3, 9. So we have to do algebra. So take x plus h and FOIL that out. So it's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared and then we have minus x squared all over h. All right, so let's simplify that, and we get the limit as h goes to 0. Um, x squared and x squared are gone, and what you're going to end up with is something that uh, is, uh, they both have h in common. So factor that h out to the front, and you get h 2x plus h over h. And see, if we plug in 0 right now, we're still getting 0 over 0. But once we reduce that and get rid of it, and then take the limit as h goes to 0, okay, people forget to do that. h is going to 0, so you're going to take 0 and plug it in for that h right there. And the answer would be 2x. All right, cool. 2x is the formula to find the slope of the tangent at any point on the graph of x squared. It's a formula. Okay, so I could find the slope at any point. I could find the point, a slope at 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, okay? But we're trying to find the slope at the point 3, 9. So what we do is our point is 3, 9. So that means that x is 3, and we're going to go 2 times 3, and the slope is 6, okay? If I wanted to, like I said, 
find the slope at the point 1, 1. I would plug in 1 and the slope would be 2. And as you can see, if you go back to this graph, when you go to the point 1, 1, the slope is not as steep. It's 2. When I go to um, the one that we found in blue, that's a pretty steep line and the slope was 6 there. What's the slope at 0, 0? The slope at 0, 0 is 0. Okay, and our formula tells us that too. If we had the point 0, 0, we would go 2 times 0 from our tangent formula, and we get the slope is 0. All right, so our point is 3, 9, and our slope is 6. So the second thing they're going to do is they're going to ask you to, part B, uh, write an equation for that line, that blue line that I drew up there. Write an equation for the tangent what it's called, it's called the tangent line, at the point 3, 9. Well, we can do that because we have a point and we have a slope. And let's just put this into point-slope form. Do you remember point-slope form? y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. This is why this is my favorite formula because of calculus. Because we use it so much. Because we always have a point, we found the slope, we just put it in a point-slope form. So we go y minus 9 equals 6, x minus 3, okay. and then uh, if they want it in slope-intercept form, which most people do, you go ahead and distribute. <clears throat> Bring the 9 over, y is 6x minus 9. Okay, there's also another line that um, they say is pretty important here, and that would be the line called the normal and the normal is just the perpendicular to the tangent. Okay, We don't use that that much. They do ask for it, so I want to make sure you know what that is. So let me redraw this real quick. Okay, um, Our point was 3, 9. We found the tangent line was right here. And then the normal I'll go ahead and draw that in green. The normal will be perpendicular to the tangent. Okay? So the blue is the tangent line. The green is called the normal. And if we were going to find uh, part C in this question, might ask us to find the equation of the normal. Well, remember that if you have perpendicular lines, then the slopes are opposite reciprocal. Okay? So we would write y minus the same point, y minus 9, equals negative 1 sixth x minus 3. And then you can get that into slope-intercept form if you wanted to. Okay, how are you doing so far? Not easy, huh? Let's do one more example. Um, number four. Okay, last one. f of x equals 2x squared plus 3. Now, I know both of the examples they gave you were quadratics. They're not always going to be quadratics, but quadratics are, we're going to start easy and kind of work our way to harder. We're going to do some radicals and stuff like that. Maybe even a cubic, in, we're going to throw a cubic in there sometimes. So we're going to do all the parts. We're going to find the formula for the slope. So letter A, find a formula for the slope of the tangent using the limit as h goes to 0. Um, and then we're going to B, find the slope at the point. Well, they don't give you a point sometimes. They just Sometimes they'll say just at x equals 1. And then C, we're going to find the equation of the tangent. And then D, we'll find the equation of the normal. You don't have to draw a graph every time. I just did that earlier to help you picture what's going on. All right, so here we go. Let's do the limit as h goes to 0. So we're going to find f of x plus h. And I know it's weird because you feel like you should be plugging in this into your formula, but you're not. You're actually plugging x plus h 
into your function. So we're going to do 2 times x plus h squared plus 3. So you see this x up here, right here, this x? This x is being replaced by x plus h. That's what f of x plus h is. And then minus f of x. Now be careful. You have to subtract all of f of x. And f of x has two parts this time, so we will need to distribute. And this is all over h. Okay, once you get that, this next part is just algebra. We're going to FOIL this out and then distribute the 2. So when I FOIL this out, I get x squared, but it's times 2. My middle term, because don't forget, this always has a middle term here. 2xh but times 2 would be 4xh. And then h squared times 2 is 2h squared. And I still have that plus 3. And I subtract 2x squared, and I subtract 3, and this is all over h. Now, you'll know when you do something wrong on this problem, like your algebra is wrong, because at this point, anything that doesn't have an h in it is going to be canceled out. They cancel each other. 2x squared minus 2x squared. 3 minus 3. And I'm left with um, things that have an h in it, and I'm going to factor the h out. Let's see, we get 4x plus 2h, it's all over h, reduce the h's, and then don't forget this part, take the limit as h goes to 0, plug in 0 for h, and your answer would be 4x. Okay, that is the formula to find the slope at any point on that function 2x squared plus 3. So part b is, what is the slope? When x equals 1. So take your formula and plug in 1, and the slope would be 4. Okay, letter C, what's the equation of the line? Well, I know the slope is 4, and my point is 1 something. Okay, don't plug your 1 into this formula, that's to find the slope. But let's find out what y is by plugging it into f of x. So f of 1 is 2 times 1 squared plus 3, which is 5. So now I have my slope and my point. I can put this into point-slope form. y minus 5 equals 4, x minus 1. A lot of times I just let you leave it like that, because I know you guys know how to distribute. And then the normal would be y minus 5 equals negative 1 fourth, x minus 1. There we go. All right, try some of these in the homework. Um, I know it's not easy because I'm not there, but I think you guys can handle it. And then Friday, we'll go over it and do a whole bunch. All right, have a great day.